Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, so welcome to today's uh, museum seminar. Uh, it's really my great pleasure to welcome today's uh, today's speaker, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Li Zhangguo. So, um, uh, Zhangguo currently is a professor of uh, rheumatology. Uh, also director of Institute of Rheumatology and Immunology Center for Clinical Immunology uh, in Medical School of Beijing University. He is also the president of Clinical Immunology Association of China, uh, the, the honorary uh, president of Chinese Rheumatology Association, and the past president of Asian uh, Pacific, Pacific League, League uh, Against the Rheumatology. So uh, he also... Um, uh, work as a chief editor of uh, rheumatology and autoimmunity. So um, uh, Zhang Guo's uh, uh, lab is mainly interested in uh, studying mechanism and uh, immune therapy of uh, rheumatoid uh, arthritis, uh, systemic lupus, um, and then uh, uh, Schoenger's uh, syndrome. So he has really a uh, very rich experience um, in autoimmune diseases. Uh, so far, uh, Zhang Guo's lab has published over 400 different articles on peer-reviewed journals, uh, and then a lot of them actually are uh, really on the published on the prestigious uh, journals, uh, including like Nature, Nature Medicine, Lancet, Immunity, and Science, etc. And then, uh, based on his contribution to uh, in the field, he uh, Zhang Guo really um, received several national and inter international awards for his dedication to uh, uh, rheumatology. So I think uh, without further ado, uh, I think Zhang Guo today uh, is gonna talk about the challenge and opportunity in autoimmune diseases. Um, really appreciate your contribution, uh, uh, Zhang Guo. So uh, please go ahead. Hey, um, thank you, um, Professor Wu for your introduction and the um, invitation. Uh, I'm glad to um, have this uh, chance to talk to uh, uh, the uh, audience, the immunologists and other the um, professionals uh, on such a, a nice platform organized by uh, Prof. Wu. Uh, as a um, uh, rheumatologist, uh, my talk today will be uh, um, uh, mainly focused on my work and um, uh, my understanding uh, of uh, autoimmune diseases. Uh, I hope I can provide uh, some clue for your uh, uh, research. So uh, the talk the topic today is on the uh, challenge and uh, opportunity uh, in the autoimmune diseases. Um, like uh, Prof. Wu introduced, I'm from the um, uh, clinical setting department, rheumatology and immunology the, at the People's Hospital. Beijing University. So um, I'm going to talk from these four um, aspects. So first is the burden of the autoimmune diseases, the uh, uh, mechanism and clinical relevance. The um, also um, will cover the um, biomark uh, study and uh, how to predict autoimmune diseases. Uh, lastly, we'll uh, have some slides on the immunotherapies and the uh, uh, probably uh, research potential. So uh, for the burden of um, um, autoimmune disease, I'll show you firstly some photos of, of the patients uh, so you know uh, roughly the, what patient looks like. See, uh, this the, the patient with the, we call the, vasculitis, the painful, the food and the, uh, the, uh, the, the muscle and the joint. This is a joint deformity from rheumatoid arthritis, skin rash from loops. Uh, the, uh, also this uh, caused by hyperglobulinemia. Uh, also we call the vasculitis here. The uh, uh, pulmonary involvement, the deformity of different joint. So the uh, autoimmune disease here, mainly rheumatic disease are really a um, systemic disease. So not only joint, skin, muscle, it's organ 
uh, also uh, uh, involved uh, in these kind of disorders. So this is uh, uh, what look like in the daily practice in rheumatology. This is in, in my uh, actual department in Beijing University People's Hospital. You see uh, uh, per day, we will see about uh, uh, 350 to 500 patients per day. So the so many patients are going down and up in the building outpatients clinic. Uh, uh, one year, uh, they uh, normally have uh, like 110,000 patients to visit. So the hospital, not only rheumatology, it's very busy, but the rheumatology is one of the busiest, I should say, in the uh, general hospital because the patient um, uh, cannot get uh, the, uh, we should say, the safe and effective treatment. Sometimes they need to control and then come back to flare. So have to uh, come to the clinic uh, again and again. So that's the burden and the problem the doctor face so every day. So this is to show the classification of this group of disease. See here, you see the systemic disease, uh, including the um, systemic loops erythematosus, we call the SLE, Sjogren syndrome, scleroderma, dermatomyositis, polymyositis, et cetera. So this is the systemic uh, kind of uh, involvement uh, uh, in these patients uh, a different vasculitis. So rheumatoid arthritis is another major uh, the, uh, autoimmune disease, spondyloarthropathies difference. So all these disease um, belong to the group we call autoimmune disease or uh, rheumatic disease, you know, over 100 kind of disease. So it's so, uh, quite a, a large number of patients come to the hospital every day. So uh, there is uh, uh, actually the epidemiology study uh, from my own uh, group as, uh, 10 years ago to study the prevalence of different diseases. This actually, um, in terms of prevalence, um, still stay the, basically the same as 10 years ago. So we see the RA loops, that's the percentage. Totally in the um, in mainland China, we have more than 50 million patients. I mean, the systemic uh, autoimmune disease. It's a quite large number of patients uh, need to be looked after. So that's the situation in this country at the moment. Uh, we did a, a study a few years ago, uh, published last year in the Lancet uh, Regional Health to show the low remission rate in the RA. That's the data from uh, 17 centers in Asia Pacific area uh, cover 2010 RA patients. We can see from this uh, the uh, diagram uh, based on the six D criteria, you see the RA patients get remission, uh, the, the percentage only comes to like 35.5, 30%, 26, and so on. So most of the patients are actually not in remission. They still have joint pain, deformity, morning stiffness, et cetera. So that's the situation in Asia Pacific. The, I would say the, almost the worldwide. So RA has a low uh, remission. This uh, is also studies. Um, uh, it's a multi-center in, uh, in China uh, showing the disability of RA. You can see from this uh, table, about 77.4% of the patients, if you do a survey in clinic, the patients in disability the status, meaning most of patients with deformity, joint deformity. 
So uh, this should be um, overcome actually in, in certain years. We need a more, a better method to diagnose, to treat the patients. Now, uh, another disease um, uh, is a loops. Uh, just one slide to show the, the similar problem. Based on the two criteria, one we called LL death, the other called Doris, showing the remission rate is 27%, 20.7%. Uh, this is a relatively loose criteria. This is 10.4. Also, more than 80 or 90% of, of the patients with loops are not in remission. So they have the kidney problem, later on maybe renal failure. So this uh, also need to be uh, the, the uh, work on. The, now, uh, one slide to show you the, um, the medication. Uh, cyclophosphamide is one of the major, um, even now, the medication to be used on loop tracing. I use this almost every day. But we know this is a cytotoxic drug. The doctor know that. Patient know that also, but patient and doctor have to face the problem. Patient have to take this medication every uh, so often. So it cause the problem, uh, like uh, the uh, uh, for young women, this is uh, the main population of uh, loop patients, 45 or 6 percent or 20 percent of patients have the problem, infection also. So that's a very uh, severe problem for the patients. So we need a better medication for patients. So what can we do as a, a rheumatology or, or maybe or a rheumatology or research? We should uh, uh, think about uh, to solve this problem. I think one is to uh, to study the mechanism, to predict the disease early to find better therapy for the patients. So for the mechanism study, I show you a few slides that take uh, RA as a as an example. So um, RA and loops uh, in um, in general with some similarity in terms of the, the cause of the disease. Say uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, has some uh, the, uh, associated actually with the genetic factor, sex hormone, infection, like EBV, HPV, MCV, and microbiota, inflammation, then lead to immune, should say autoimmune responses, different cell sub subtype have the uh, abnormalities. So this is uh, the red part is uh, the, uh, the, the uh, I mean, the term is what we have been working on in my own group. So this is a pre-RA period for patient before the patient develop RA is happening. So actually in hospital, a lot of doctors actually work on the clinical phase of RA. So a few years ago, uh, I wrote uh, the article for the for Nature Review, I uh, just uh, uh, try to uh, indicate the uh, abnormality of different uh, cells, immune cells, uh, all the, almost all the T cell, the B cell, plasma cells uh, have the uh, abnormality producing antibodies, uh, the uh, inflammatory factors, so causing joint, damage and arthritis and other organ problem. So that's the general uh, mechanism, mechanism for RA and other the, uh, autoimmune disease. The, um, in loops patients, we see the, um, uh, the deficiency of interleukin-2 and T-cell subsets. Here, um, the uh, in, into interleukin to level deficiency associated with nephritis. This deficiency L2 associated with leukopenia with other manifestation, 
So cytokine is play a role in the lupus patients. Also the T cell subset. So Treg in SRE is much lower, deficiency in number and the function. In the um, inactive, inactive patients, the Treg is better, this is normal. So Treg is deficiency in SRE. Well, the TH17 and TFH in the loop patients, these cell subtype are actually are high actually, uh, causing the, uh, the organ damage, like I mentioned. So there's the imbalance Treg and the T factor in uh, the uh, loop patients. Uh, we did uh, uh, a study uh, with Professor uh, Wan Li Liu uh, from Tsinghua University. We found the IgG1 variant actually related to the uh, B cell activation. The first slide shows the T cell different the uh, variation the uh, of abnormality here the B cell. So the uh, 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 the uh, uh, should say mutation in this. Uh, uh, the uh, IG1 tail G from G to R is causing IgG1 B cell activation and plasma cell differentiation. So the patient will have a high level of autoantibodies. So related to SLE. So this phenomenon confirmed not only the animal model, the in vitro study, but also in our, uh, as a patient with 1,800 patients and some controls. So the IgG1 mutation associated with B cell activation. And also in NK cell, you can see from this, uh, the um, uh, figure, the CMV virus associates, associated with lupus with the um, uh, RA and the Sjogren syndrome because the, um, there's a, a surface protein PP150 on CMV uh, share a common homology with CEP2A on the NK cell. So by molecular mimicry, C CMV virus can cause NK cell damage in SRA patients. So this uh, is a collaboration with uh, uh, Professor Yang Guang from the uh, Military Medical uh, Institute uh, uh, Academy. So the, um, the virus can cause autoimmune disease. This is to show the microbiota, not only the gut, but also in tonsil, in RA. We can see there is um, the difference from normal individual and RA. The microbiota play a role in RA. Here you see the uh, normal individual, the treated arthritis patient, this is untreated. So difference again. So in general, we can, there are two uh, findings. One is the imbalance of the microbiota, the uh, uh, butyrate consumer, there are more consumer here, less butyrate producer. So um, consequently, the butyrate, the uh, 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 bacteria is less, leading to activation of Th17 TFH. So um, associated with arthritis in terms of rheumatoid arthritis here. In tonsil microbiota study, we found there are less cell barriers. To, therefore, the cell barriers is deficient. So leading to the L6 receptor, L21 receptor activation, again, associated with RA in this study. So that's um, uh, also the microorganism associated with autoimmune disease, not only RA, but also loops, uh, AS. This has been published uh, in many journals. 
Now, like I said, the, uh, we need a biomark to predict for patients because some patients don't have typical manifestation. So we need the uh, some blood test to see whether the patient is the RA or lupus. So here I show you the some of the data, the, the, the number here actually. So this rheumatoid factor, the anti-CTP, they are the marker of four for a rheumatoid arthritis. This uh, uh, double strand DNA and SM, SM antibody relate to lupus patients. SSB is for Sjogren syndrome, but we can see the sensitivity here is not that ideal. So many patients, uh, we couldn't find the so-called biomarker in their blood. So only like a 50% or 6%, uh, sometimes only like a 20 something. So then how can we diagnose the patients? One example here is on the right, see for, to diagnose the Sjogren syndrome patient, sometimes we need to do the biopsy to see whether the patient have the gland, the inflammation or not. But in, in my country, most of the patients don't allow you to do this. And that they don't have the biomark. Then doctors have no way to diagnose some of the patients because typically the manifestation lacking. So, then patients come back a few years later, they have a severe problem already, see that lung problem. So that's the, the difficulty we face every day. Uh, is, actually in theory, um, this is a study is to show uh, before the patient, before RA here, uh, in the blood, you can test some of the molecule. Here is the CCP. So a few years before the disease onset, actually you can find the CTP, CTP antibody in some patients. Here's to show some other molecule. Also, we can find some the uh, clue in the patient's blood, but clinically we cannot get this done because it's not a routine test and not everybody have this. So it would be good to set up an uh, assay to identify which molecule are critical, are, are sensitive, and also specific for the patients. So that's the um, uh, uh, hot research area at the moment, at least in the last 10 years or so. So this, uh, uh, what have been done in my uh, own group, we um, studied some molecules or antibody or the, um, the marker in the RA, lupus and Sjogren syndrome and, and so on. Uh, some the markers are relatively specific, but not, not enough. So that's uh, why I say we need more markers. Just to give you one uh, example, is the um, uh, called the scavenger receptor A. Uh, this is the bell marker of RA. We uh, uh, done this study a few years ago uh, to show the uh, um, SRA molecule appear in RA patients. There's a high percentage, but not in other um, disease like lupus, Sjogren's syndrome, ankylosing spondylitis, gout, and psoriatic arthritis, and so on. So it seems um, most of the RA patients have this the, uh, SRA molecule. This is from the 3,000 uh, patients uh, cohort. Uh, also, this um, molecule uh, associated with bone erosion, with Auto antibody production, the joint deformity. So this is a, a relatively specific marker for RA. Also, 
uh, uh, we can find this um, uh, SRA in early RA patients. See the, the cost of disease less than two years, less than one year, less than half year. We can find the uh, SRA in uh, half or more than half of patients. But still, we have another 40% or 50% patients who are lacking SRA, maybe also lacking CCP. Then doctors need this other marker to show whether this is a RA or not. So this really uh, clinically, we need more research to, uh, to predict, to identify RA patients. Now, the, the last uh, the part of the talk will be uh, immunotherapy. Uh, 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 show you some the example here. Uh, I take two uh, disease, one is RA, the next one is uh, lupus, to show the problem we're having at the moment. See, so this is a, a very good review um, from Lancet to show the situation in a uh, clinic at the moment. Here, this is a different um, medication for RA patients. So we use the methyltrexate every day for RA patients. This is the uh, biologics. Here is the different uh, auto, uh, different antibodies, also methyltrexate, to show how these medication work on RA patients. This is uh, the ACR seventy criteria. Based on this, that's 70% uh, of the activity of patients controlled. So we take this, not 100%, as a criteria. We can see from different trials, only around 20% of 32%, 20%, 24% of the patients are in this ACR 70-20. No, ACR 70, meaning most of the patients with these therapies still not in control. The disease is still active. So that's why only in RA, we have many now for more than 10 um, the biologics used in RA patients, but still we cannot control the patient well. So this is uh, the problem at the moment. Uh, I'll show you the, the situation here using this figure. You can see as the immunologist, you, you know this well, uh, the uh, tri-molecule from APC to T cell, I think this is the initiation of the immune response. Downstream cell and the molecule work or cause RA, cause different the, uh, the symptoms or sign. But most of the biologic from here you can see against the T cell, against the B cell, all inhibit the cytokines. These are all the downstream, downstream cell and the molecule. So we are having the problem as I mentioned in previous slides. Patient cannot be controlled well. I, my own opinion, I think we need uh, need this medication, biologics, but also we need uh, some study probably on this uh, antigen recognition presentation in uh, this area. So I uh, have some work done, try to block the the uh, antibody uh, the antigen recognition. Here you can see from the right. So we know this the um, antigen has different uh, side chain. Some side chain responsible for the uh, HLA binding, form of so-called dimer. Some side chain contact to TCR. But what uh, we did is uh, to substitute this um, TCR responsible side chain. To use this um, auto peptide to block the antigenic uh, peptide. Show you from here. So this is the uh, altered the uh, 
the, we, we call it a non-antigenic peptide. You can get into the APC cell uh, in the animal study and uh, in uh, in vitro. You can see this uh, peptide can uh, improve the balance of Treg and the T factor, increase Treg, decrease T H seventeen cells, so can uh, uh, bring down inflammation of the arthritis model and the patient PBMC. So uh, can be used on RA patients. This is uh, uh, now in the phase one clinical trial, uh, just finished actually uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, looks uh, it's promising uh, uh, to use the uh, non-antigen peptide. So this is with some publication on this. So this is just an example for the RA study. Another disease, as, as I mentioned, just show you using this slide, we have uh, uh, many different medication on SRE patients. We had uh, hydroxychloroquine, corticosteroid, like a glucocorticoid. Then here uh, we have different uh, oral immunosuppressive. This is the cyclophosphamide and the different biologics, so different regime also. But we need uh, probably um, more the molecule have as a safe and effective. But all this medication here can bring down certain percentage of patients in control, but not all, even a, maybe all, a small percentage of patients. So we need a better a drug for SRE patients. Now, uh, um, in clinically, doctor mainly use, like I mentioned, this uh, steroid immunosuppressive to bring down the T factor cells. So this is the situation in autoimmune disease. We have a, a lot more T factor, less T rag, so imbalance. Bring down this, try to balance, but when we withdraw or reduce the dose of these drugs, the effect, effect will come back. So if we, we're not keeping the patient in the long term, patient, the disease will, will flare for most of the patients. So we are thinking whether we can increase the TREC. Of course, there are many studies to using TREC to infuse the patient, but so far, this trial not working well. So uh, in uh, our own group, we use the low dose L2 to increase TREG, uh, try to balance these uh, uh, two sets of T cell subset uh, like this, uh, hopefully to improve these, uh, this uh, TREG and T factor become healthy. So that's the, uh, some of the study have been done here. Uh, there are, see, um, a study showing here the L2 at the low dose can increase for P3 positive t rex cell, but not by other cytokines. So it's clearly uh, showing L2 can do the work. So this uh, one of the study to show the effect of low dose L2. Uh, we also did a, a study uh, in um, loop patients. I use low dose L2, it's so one million units every other day. Here you can see the Treg increase with low dose L2 in two weeks. When we stop L2, Treg drop. Give patient L2, it go up again, drop, go up again, so zigzag. So clearly showing the low dose L2 can increase Treg in lupus patients. But low dose L2 can also uh, bring down the TH17 TFH. So it will work in lupus patients. Here's the clinical data. So that's the um, different the um, uh, clinical uh, manifestation, the immunological 
uh, parameter, the, the blood test, the urine, that's baseline. This is in three months. You see all these, almost all these um, parameters getting better in uh, three months, the p values here. So those of the L2 are working in SRA patients. Here's the four um, uh, main um, the, I should say the, like, uh, criteria. The, the SI4 response, you can see L2 is better compared to placebo group. It's about 29% increase. Disease activity, L2 show better result. The uh, decrease of steroid, L2 is better. Here also for the clinical remission, L2 clearly showing the better data to control, say, renal uh, damage, protein, new, uh, protein urea getting down. So L2 working in loop patient and uh, uh, loop nep nephritis. Also, this um, uh, low dose L2, uh, I should say another beauty of this drug is can this L2 uh, can bring down or can inhibit infection of the uh, patients. So we did a, a study, a, a survey actually, uh, 665 patients uh, control and uh, low dose L2. You can see from here, this is the, um, uh, the uh, uh, on this side shows better protection on infection. Here's the, the worst. Okay, only factor here is low dose L2 reduce the infection rate in loop the patient, but not other the um, uh, uh, so the per parameter or the uh, uh, factors due disease duration lymphopenia they are, didn't affect much on the infection, meaning the low dose L2 can used on patients who in um, risk with infection. So that's something need to be, uh, the, uh, I mean, the, the mechanism need to be uh, more studied. Uh, so now the, um, uh, this uh, uh, trial I should say, uh, uh, interleukin two had been uh, like a register in the, the uh, worldwide, many uh, different countries that from the USA, the Europe, and the China and other area. So studying on autoimmune disease and other inflammatory disorders. Uh, the last slide I want to show you um, briefly about the, this new therapy in autoimmune disease by review. Um, here, uh, many, uh, it is, to tell us the, uh, all the uh, therapy therapy or non-therapy therapy is to let patient get to immune homeostasis or tolerance. So here's the uh, therapies, the uh, TREG, uh, CAR-T, uh, all the, uh, except um, there are two publications, a uh, few patients of loops using CAR-T that working well, but all the other cell, cell therapy uh, not in clinical, uh, not improve at least. Uh, for non-cell based therapy, there are few uh, the uh, drug medication working, including uh, low dose L2, rapamycin, and others. Here I put add a few other uh, options, say uh, T cell, B cell vaccine, uh, cut T, maybe T rag in the future and some other molecules uh, may be working. So I think this is uh, the areas for the uh, or rheumatology immunology to working on. I, I think the, the non-cell based therapy probably have, have a better uh, future, uh, the clinical the, um, uh, availability also. So we need a safer, the uh, effective, and uh, probably cheaper uh, drug for patients. This is the clinical need. 
Uh, lastly, I, I would like to thank all the uh, all the uh, the fellow and the students from my group, if that, uh, particularly Dr. Uh, Jing He. She did a lot of work on the IL-2, uh, the clinical trial on loops on the Sjogren syndrome. Uh, they're all working well. Uh, thanks to all collaborators from Australia, particularly uh, Dr. Di Yu, uh, have a, a lot. We working together for many years, and. Uh, uh, Wan Li Liu from Tsinghua University and others. So uh, here I, I would like to stop here too. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to take some questions if you have. Okay.